Alright, if you're hoping to make good combat games or character customization systems or any complex game for that matter, at some point you're gonna have to learn what object-oriented programming is and also how it's used. Matter of fact, I think every scripter should know this. It's the best way to create frameworks, which I will also be introducing in this video. Just to make sure you understand what I'm saying, if you wanna be a game developer or even just take it as a hobby, you need to learn what I'm about to talk about. Sooner or later, you're gonna use it. So might as well just watch this video until the end and see you some time on that as always you'll have a download link to the place i'll be using in this video just in case you want to personally check any of the code i show that said in this video i will be giving you a conceptual introduction damn that sounds fancy conceptual but yeah, i'll give you an introduction to object oriented programming and what frameworks are and how i personally use them conventionally outside of roblox studio game development i believe it's used a bit differently from what i'm about to show you but conceptually they're the same but i'll show you how i use it so yeah let's start If you're new to scripting, then these two terms might not ring a bell, and I don't blame you for that. I didn't know that object-oriented programming or frameworks were a thing until like four to six months ago, might be more, I don't know. Before then, people on my server would ask me randomly like, Ludius, do you know OOP? You gotta know OOP. And I'd be like, OOP, what's that? I think people actually call it OOP instead of OOP, but OOP are just the initials of object-oriented programming, by the way. They would also ask me if I have good frameworks for my game, and I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I got good frameworks. And bro, I don't know why, but my thought process for that was, hmm, object-oriented programming. A Roblox Studio part is an object, and everything in games is made out of different objects. So therefore, the coding I'm doing right now must be object-oriented programming. I know anyone with coding experience would be looking at me weird for saying that right now, but hey, I didn't know any better, and also, it's not like people that make starter tutorial playlists, or even advanced ones, ever mention the existence of OOP or what frameworks are, or at least the ones I learned from didn't mention it, hence why I'm making this video. But anyways, back to the story, I continued clueless, completely ignorant of what object-oriented programming was, until I had a conversation with Braldev. At one point, we were talking about what was the most optimal way to create a battleground game and he asked if I knew about object-oriented programming and I was like yeah yeah and he started talking about classes and super classes and modules and all this and all that I had no idea of what he was talking about ain't gonna lie that was an embarrassing moment but it is what it is bro but hey after that I realized that OOP was not what I thought and it was then when I started doing research it's not until a couple of months ago that I actually ended up somewhat understanding it to the point that I can actually use it so I want to show you what it's used for it's not specific used for frameworks but it's very commonly used in frameworks which I'll also be talking about in this video so what is object-oriented programming really I'll tell you in a bit but before that we're gonna cover what modules are real quick there are tutorials fully dedicated to modules this is not gonna be one of them but put in the simplest terms a module script is a script that contains information that can be accessed and modified throughout different scripts you can reference the module and you get the information inside it hopefully you understood if you didn't then go watch a tutorial on it and come back after that i should probably make a video covering modules now that i think about it anyway the combination of modules and oop is what most people use to build the framework works for their games it's almost like standard practice i know it might not all make sense just yet but stay with me it will all make sense in the end and later i'll even hop in studio and walk you through everything that i'm talking about so don't worry now we can move into object oriented programming i found a definition that actually explains it pretty well the definition is by educative.io so shout out to them i guess object oriented programming or how some people call it oop is a programming paradigm in computer science that relies on the concept of classes and objects. It is used to structure a software program into simple reusable pieces of code blueprints, usually called classes, which are used to create individual instances of objects. And I know you have no idea of what this means, so put in simple terms, OOP is just a way of coding that ensures that your code is reusable and simple. That's pretty much what it is. And this is important because this saves you time in the long run. Some frameworks that use OOP take a long time to make, but in the long run for adding stuff into your projects, using OOP makes it 10 times easier 
to add content into your game if you've actually structured it correctly that is. It might have sounded complicated but it's really not, I'll further explain this. The first foreign concept they mentioned is classes and classes just refer to a template of attributes and actions, maybe you'll understand it better with an actual example. Let's say you're making an MMORPG right and your players all have characters right, so all the info relating to that character meaning all the attributes and actions they can perform that would be a class, like the combination of all of that would be called a class. Your character has eyes, a mouth, a nose, skin color, level, experience, all those are attributes, pure information we could say. Imagine it as a table because that's pretty much what it is, a table containing all the information related to something, in this case the player's character. I showed you the attributes but I also said it can have actions, in this case you just have functions inside this and you'll see why they're useful later, don't worry about it. So. If your players can M1, you might also want to have an M1 function here, right? A run function, a block function, all of those functions that are actions that your players are meant to do, you add them here. And before I continue, the correct way to refer to these is not as functions, but as methods. That's what they're called. They're called methods. What's the difference between a method and a function, you might be asking? How you call them and also how you create them. Here's where we'll go into studio so you can understand this. We're here in studio and all I've done is create a module script inside replicated storage and rename the module to player profiles. This module is going to serve us as a template for all the player objects we create. It'll make sense in a bit, just stay with me here. There are two tables here, right? We got player profiles, which is like where we will store all our objects. And we also have the table player profile, which is the template for any object that goes into player profiles. Player profiles here would be the class that stores the information of player. Um, yeah, so when I was editing the video, I realized that I said it wrong. So player profiles is where we would store all the objects from our player profile class and player profile is the template that we're going to use to create all the different objects for the player profile class. So hopefully there's no confusion there and now back to the video. Essentially we duplicate and modify player profile and add the duplicate into the player profiles table. Hopefully that wasn't too hard to understand. Why do we put the duplicate inside that? Because we want all of the character profiles to be in one place so that we can easily access them. Just stay with me here. It'll all make sense in a bit. Here we got our attributes for the player profile, just simple information. But then here we got our methods, function like blocks of code that go inside our table, right? They behave very similarly to functions. If you want to add a method, as you can see here, you type function plus the name of the table you're using as a class, in this case player profile plus colon followed by the name of the function. Then you open and close parentheses and everything inside the parentheses are arguments. Obviously you press enter in the end. So what's the difference between this method and normal functions? Well the difference is that inside these methods you can use something called self and this is very important so pay attention. And self just refers to the object the function is inside of. So self is all this table right here and we can treat it like that because it's just that. So we can literally print self name and this will print the value of the name attribute inside the object. In this case John Wick. So yeah that's the main difference between functions and methods. It's the self. You also call them differently but we'll get into that in a bit. Before that we need to create the way that we're going to duplicate this template and put it inside the player profiles table. And we're going to do that by creating a normal function, yes, a normal function, not a method, inside the player profile table because you can have functions and methods both in one table by the way. You should know that. I mean probably didn't know that if you're new but you do now and that's what I did here. This is a normal function that goes inside player profiles. How do you know it's a normal function and not a method? Because it uses a dot instead of a colon after the table is referenced. So this function is called new and it has a parameter called id which in this case is supposed to be the player id. So what this function is supposed to do is create a table inside the dictionary player profiles but not only that but also make the key inside the dictionary equal to the player's id so we can easily reference it later. Well first we gotta duplicate the player profiles template and we use a function I got from a random place in the dev forum called beep copy. Your first instinct might have been to use table.clone but that would not be good for it because table.clone 
doesn't really clone the table it just references it i know it's weird but essentially if you use table.clone and you modify an object since it's referencing the original and all objects are referencing the original as well because that's what you're using to create them right you're using table.clone and all of them are going to be created using the same method then any change you make to any object will also occur for all other objects because as i said they don't actually clone the table they just reference it which is not what we want when we're dealing with separate data that are meant to be used separately right in this case the data being the different players right so you can use deep copy i'm not going to explain in depth what this function does just know that whatever table you pass as an argument will actually get cloned and return to you as an actual separate clone that's as best as i can put it hopefully it makes sense and so we create a new variable inside the dot new function i called it new profile and inside it we call the deep copy function inside this and pass the player profile as an argument because this is what we're cloning right and lastly we just gotta add this to the player profiles table so we do player profiles and then we put the player id in string as the key and then you put equal to new profile i used to string because i like having my keys as strings in this type of situations but it also work if you don't use it and actually that wasn't the last thing you'll also want to return the newly created new profile so that you can use the info from whatever you call the function from and now we're gonna call the function dot new for that we're gonna create a player added script inside the server script service inside this script you want to require the player profiles module and also the when a new player joins the game now in here the first thing we'll do is create a new player profile object using our dot new function and remember to pass the player the user id as an argument and that should run the code to create a new object by the way ignore anything that's commented out we'll get to that in a bit we have two prints here now we got print player profile and we got print player profiles with an s at the end so plural <laughs> One is meant to print the object player profile and the other is meant to print the table that holds every single one of these players. If you test this now, you'll get two tables in the output. The first one is the object, meaning like the table containing the attributes and methods. And the other is a dictionary containing all the objects and also the function new that we just used to create the object. Note how your object is stored with the user ID as its key. This is very useful because if at any moment you want to reference this specific object from any script you can require the module and through the id get that exact object now let's try that now if we instead of printing player profile directly we do print player profiles to string player the user id we'd also get the same result we're just referencing it differently now the last thing we gotta cover is calling the methods let's say at any given point of your game you want your player to start running right we have a run start method here right so we just gotta call that how do you call that simple you just do player profile colon run start and parenthesis in the end because it's almost like a function and that will run the code run start for the player profile that we're referencing this method inside the class currently just does three things prints run start prints self and then it also prints self name test this real quick and there you go it prints run start then it gives us the object table and then our name which is John Wick. There are also a couple of things I want you to take into account. You can also call methods from inside other methods. So if at the end of the run start I call the M1 method then we would get the prints related to that method as well. The last thing I want you to take into account is that you can also modify the attributes inside an object. For example, if you go to the player edit script, if you do player profile and you reference the name attribute, so player profile name, and you make it equal to player.name, then this will overwrite the name attribute of the object to the name of the player. If you test it and you open the last object table print here, you'll see that the name attribute is now equal to your name name so in my case my name is Ludius so and yeah now you're all set up to do character customization cool inventory systems and all that I'm planning to make tutorials on this in the future I just had to get this out of the way first so that we could have some sort of base to work on I hope this helped you understand how frameworks for games are supposed to be created how object-oriented programming works and the importance of module scripts I recommend you to do research by yourself and to experiment by yourself until you understand the topic fully I've said it multiple times but this is very important for you to learn and yeah with all of this being said 
keep leveling up bro be safe and i'll see you when i see you peace